What is happening YouTube? Blair McKeithen here representing Formula Golf. I have a special guest today, one of the best junior golfers in the entire country, Cameron Sisk. Look over to the camera and say hi Cameron. Hey guys. And we're gonna do a little what's in the bag today, see what, uh, see what he's got going for him. So, first off, we got a nice bag here. This is a brand new tailor-made same bag as mine, but a lot cooler looking colors. Where'd you get this bag? Isn't it? Didn't you just get this pretty recently? Yeah, my uh, tailor made right, sent it to me a few weeks ago. Nice, dude. Yeah, this thing's sweet. Got the AJGA towel, I see. So let's start with the wedges. What are you playing? Uh, I got the milled grind 52 through 60. All right. Any special bounce or anything? No, nah, just standard bounce. Um, pretty stock. What are these? What's this thing here? Uh, honestly, that's just kind of uh, when I got fit of the kingdom, they kind of put me in that and some something with the balance. All right, pretty so sweet. And what uh, what irons you got? You gonna take take your seven iron out or something? Uh, pitching much through seven iron. I got the P750s. All right. How do you like them so far? They're solid. Yeah. Um, the mm. modest nippon shaft. Nice. Is there are they X or? They're just, stiff. Okay. Heavier stiff, and then. Four iron through six iron. I got the P seven seventies. Same shafts and everything. Same obviously. shafts. What uh, what do you think is the difference between the seven seventies and your seven uh, fifties? Just like a thicker top line. Yeah, a bit thicker top line. More weight is kind of centered on the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, helps the ball get in the air a little bit. Yeah, a little easier to hit. All right, and let's see what you're working with with uh, your woods and hybrids. Uh, Twenty one degree M one hybrid. All right. Uh, set to nineteen point five. And it's a rogue 95s. Nice, rogue, uh, rogue, but it's black, I think. Yeah. Nice. And then is that the same? I see you have the the last year's model M2. Yeah, this is one of my favorite clubs. No point yeah. in getting rid of what's not yeah. broken, yeah. I always tell people on my channel that it's really tough to find a proper three wood and hybrid that you know you you like to hit. And when you find one, like I personally, I, I wouldn't change my three wood unless something comes out that says blows it out of the water. For sure, I agree. And we got a nice driver here. M1. M1. 10.5, pretty stock. Mm -hmm. It's for boogie. This is last year's shaft. Same with the three wood. All right. And what do you got in, in the bag here? Uh, like what golf balls are you playing? I play the TaylorMade TP5. Yeah, that's a good ball right there. That's what I play as well. Definitely like the feel around the green. Yeah, it's a lot, lot softer, especially than the, especially more soft than the TP5X. And let's see this putter. This is the this is the money maker right here. Yeah, TaylorMade TP Red. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, you got the line on it. Line on it. So in order, you know, you know, you can't really get the custom line on it unless you're either on the tour or in Cameron's case, one of the top ranked junior players getting ready to go to go to school. So you got that at Sawgrass in your last junior tournament? Yeah, well, uh, my tailor-made rep was there and kind of got me going with it. So what was the so what was the tournament at? Uh, it was the junior players at TPC Sawgrass. Nice, and you finished top 20, you said? Yeah. Good playing, man, good playing. So well, uh, I'm sure everyone already has noticed your hat. You rep that thing. That is an ASU hat. Tell us about how uh, how you end up getting ready to go over there starting next year. You're a senior in high school. You just started. When did you get your scholarship? Uh, I accepted a scholarship there in March. So that's at March 9th I committed this so, year. So what made you decide to pick ASU over places like Stanford? And I'm sure there's a lot of other schools that were hitting you up, offering you scholarships and stuff. But Yeah, it, I mean, the new coach there, Coach Thurman's great. And, um, he was the one that recruited me to go there and mm -hmm. went on a visit and he kind of showed me the new facilities that they're building. They're going to be ready by the time I get there and uh, the weather's great. It's a place where I can really focus on golf and right. you know, get as good as I can get. Right. Instead of going to a more academic focused school where you have to worry about you know all of that, it's best to just worry about your golf game. You know, <laughs> If you're going to get a degree, you might as well make it easy, right? Yep. So um, what's your next junior golf tournament or, or amateur event you got coming up? Uh, I have the Ping Invitational. It's an AJGA Invitational in uh, Carson Creek, Oklahoma. In Oklahoma? Yeah. When do you leave for that? Is October 6th to the 9th. All right. Well, that's coming up quick then. You got a yeah, little, little bit less than a month. For it. All right, Cameron, what are you about to hit here? This is a 56 degree. Do you think of anything in particular when you hit wedges? Um, based on the yards I want, um, you know, I'm going to take 5, 10 yards, whatever, off. Uh -huh. I make sure my acceleration through the downswing is the same no matter what. Gotcha. So, 
And this will probably take like five yards off in this shot. So what you're saying is like when you, if you have a 56 degree there and you needed to hit it like 80 yards in comparison to 100, like you try to keep the same speed, but do you shorten the swing or do yeah, you? Yeah, I'm gonna shorten the swing. I, I know like how far I need to swing back, but. Kind of like a clock system? Yeah, somewhat. Um, but no matter what, you gotta keep the same acceleration to the downswing or your yardage is gonna be a bit messed up. Right. Pretty. So what's your stock shot? Is it a little draw? Yeah. It's like a little two yarder. Dad pull it left. This is an eight iron. Okay. It's pure. AC going into match play. So, what did you shoot to get 20 AC like three, two, three under or something for those? Um, I was, I went four over, four under, so 75, 67. Okay. And then the person you lost to, I'm assuming, was top 20 or in he that was 20 area? the 34 seed, but he's a really good player. Uh -huh. uh, he had bad first round, really good second round. And then, uh, yeah, we, he was up on me pretty early, and then I took him to the 18th. And, you got me. Nice. Well, but, I mean, good playing though. That must have been a fun experience. Yeah. Walking the footsteps of El Tigre. Ripped. That's so pretty. All right, Cameron, which uh, which flag are you gonna go to first? You gonna go to the long one, middle one, short one? I go to the short one. All right, what do you do to hit shorter bunker shots as compared to like mid and long bunker shots? So this short one, I don't have much green to work with, uh -huh. so I'm gonna pretty make a pretty wide stance. Um, just lay the club face open and kind of make a short, firm swing. Kind of clip it a little bit. Perfect. Yep. An idea here. Ooh, almost dropped. Yeah, it's a pretty common misconception, I think, for uh, short bunker shots where people feel like they need to swing softer or try to ease it. Where in reality, all you gotta do really is widen your stance more, yeah. takes away the lower body part of your bunker shot and uses basically you're judging your distance with your hands and your upper body and it just you can put a lot of speed on it still and hit it really short and get a lot of spin laying soft I'll go to the middle one here all right oh i almost hit that pin <laughs> or my little uh, alignment stick that's solid and for like a longest bunker shot, like this one to this back uh, back little stick here has got to be 25 yards or so. Do you try to hit like a like kind of like a draw or what feels like a draw to hit them longer, or uh, what's your thought somewhat, process? But you know, it's just kind of you know, I might even pull out the 56 for this one. Right, right. Um, but yeah, it's I would say a little bit of a draw, and you just kind of got to feel what you're gonna do and mm -hmm. how you want it to release. 60 degree long shot. That's like a nice little like a uh, flatter trajectory there. Yeah, that's feet there. Okay. I'll film one more bunker. Yeah, that's some really controlled flight right there. I mean, yeah, 
foot. Yeah, that's perfect. It's like you know exactly the trajectory and how it's going to land and react when you have a consistent flight like that out of the long booker shots. Yeah. It's solid, dude. Yeah, three feet, and then I have to go like six of six at three feet, and then uh -huh. I go to six feet, and you got to go to five to six at six feet, and then go to nine feet, and I got to go at least four or six at nine feet. Okay. All right, what are you at right now? Um, one for one so far. All right, that's a good two start. For two. Two, for two. two for two. All right, even better start. Let's see what the stroke looks like. How many tries you, on, the, on average do you think it takes for you to do this drill? Usually to the first, the three feet and the six feet I go 100%. Uh -huh. And then maybe one or two tries on the nine feet. Nice. So you start all over again if you don't do it? Beauty. That's a beauty. What do you? What's your like practice schedule like when it comes to like grinding wise? Like a lot of a lot of kids, a lot of high schoolers who want to become D1 golfers, they they wonder what it what they what it takes to get to that point. Like what do you do on a daily basis to like hours wise and holes wise? Like definitely. Um, you know, I I kind of like to split my practice and playing. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say a, more kind of a sixty percent practice and 40% play. You definitely have to get a lot of time on the golf course. Mm -hmm. It's what makes golf easier when you get into a tournament situation. Right. Um, so I definitely get on the course a little bit more than usual just to get yourself kind of comfortable in, in that situation. Sweet. Um, and definitely spend a lot of time on the putting green and short game areas. Would you say that that's like the most important thing is the grinding on the putting and the short game? It makes, it makes a difference yeah. out of uh, all the strokes at the end. Um, and you gotta hit your driver good, no matter where you go. Right. So. Hit the hit the driver straight, and then yeah. focus on you know the everything around the greens. That's the money maker. And they, you follow uh, this little gentleman's uh, motto here, and get yourself a good foundation into turning pro. I mean, he's gonna have four years of tournament golf playing against the best players in the world, and uh, look forward to following his journey and to the PGA Tour one day. So yeah. everyone, keep an eye out for Cameron Sisk. He's going places. Cameron, thanks a lot for showing us what's in your bag. For sure, guys.